Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And today I was thinking about my vlog and I was thinking, what do I do with the vlog, right? We've done machining, we've, we've talked to some of my team members, we've talked about leadership, you know, how to make more money, whether you're an employee or uh, owner, right? And and you guys keep coming back and saying, Titan, we love seeing your shop and seeing your, your team members and, and your employees and how you guys interact and stuff. And I was like, Pow. You guys haven't met Joel, or maybe you met him for a second, but you haven't met Joel. And he's my DP, he's my head of creative. He basically is amazing. He's the one that edited The Lion, right? Just, it's like film, like it's like you're watching Gladiator or something like the bands are coming off this big piece of titanium and we're putting the titanium into the machine. It's like, ah, he's the man behind it. It takes a team, it takes a village, but he was the head editor on that, and he is right over there. He's right down there, come here. Oh, check it out, check it out. Oh, oh look at this, he even blacked out his window, like, he's in there, see? <laughs> Secret weapon right here at Titans of CNC, let's go check him out. Oh, what's up, Joel? Yo. Oh. What's up everybody, this is Titan from Titans of CNC, and this is Joel, he is my DP. He is my, my guy who edits and films and just makes it all happen, right? He's got a great team underneath him, but he is the mastermind. And uh, I would say, when it comes to filming CNC machining, he is the best in the entire game worldwide. If you saw like the TV shows, the San Quentin built behind bars, Looking at the lion machining titans titanium lion, like look at the filming on that, like it is incredible, and that's that's the man right here, Joel. Say hi to everybody. What's up, everybody? Ah, uh, so here's a, here's another day where I just thought it would be really cool to actually go behind the scenes, go into Joel's office, and let you meet another person, you know, another team member that actually makes it happen every day. And he, and he, he actually makes this look halfway decent, you know what I mean? So, you know, I feel sorry sometimes. I'm like, dude, you gotta look at me all the time. Like, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I'm just uh, I'm just <laughs> there's a lot of work that goes into it. We, we CNC machine parts, we, we, we make all the different features, we quality check and we deliver it and at this in the same way we build film and we have to actually go out and film every single piece right and you have to have all that in your head and plan it all out and we're trying to take our game to another level and uh, I talked to Joel and something that caught me was like I'm here to change lives like my team is here to change lives and when I met Joel he had just finished up a documentary series called The Pink Room, where you actually went to Cambodia. Go ahead, you want us to say a little bit about it? Yeah, it was a documentary that is on the fight against child sex trafficking in Cambodia. And went out there a number of times, had a lot of footage from uh, other people that I knew, some friends of mine, and spent eight months trying to find a story and editing and then going back and filming, coming back, filling in more pieces and more edits, more edits and um, a lot of test screenings, figure out what worked and what didn't. And all in all, it was about a two year project and on my end. And then at that point, we kind of submitted it to film festivals and kind of tried to get it out there. Yeah, he got it out there and it's been incredible. So he actually won an Emmy for this documentary. That's why I'm like, I'm like oh yeah, my team, Emmy award winning, you know, <laughs> boom, you know, but it's him, it's him. <laughs> Made it happen, but check this out. What's cool is that there's been over a thousand girls. I heard uh, in church last Sunday, they talked about a thousand um, girls have been saved. Um, through the organiz organizations that you work with and stuff and a big part of it was this documentary because um, the documentary went out to all these churches and the churches actually put money behind to actually like make a task force and save girls and like put people in behind bars and like and just make a huge difference right a thousand mm -hmm. girls taken out of that life I mean that's incredible yeah yeah, yeah it's done some 
huge things and yeah after it came out it just kind of got on PBS and then got the Emmy and then it was just a lot of screenings all over it college campuses and universities as well and kind of getting the word out to just people who gave money or gave resources or gave their time to kind of go out there and help yeah. them. Incredible. It's been cool. Yeah. And you're filming, you're making something and you're actually changing lives while doing it. Like it's this thing that you worked on and it goes out there and it just changes and it's still on Hulu. People can actually watch it on Hulu right now. It's called the pink room. And then, and then you've been here. Right now, let me tell you something like you guys already know, like I'm about the challenge, right? I've made a million parts. So like I want to I want to make more difficult parts. I want to make parts for bigger companies and, and solve big problems. And, and then, you know, have my own company, you know, then do film and do the TV show and just keep moving up and um, and just keep progressing and stuff, and stuff. So one thing that I know about Joel is that he's all about the story and about touching lives. So if we were just filming machining and he was making money just filming machining, I would bet to say he probably wouldn't be here. Yeah, I mean, when I came here, I was starting on the second season as like the B camera operator and, and I had a lot of fun and that was great, but the for me and my passions and what I love doing with film is telling meaningful stories and so there was there was a lot of meaningful stories but it wasn't like the you know super yeah gut-wrenching heartwarming like stories and so once when San Quentin came in to play I was like all right I can get down yeah, with this sense. you know so I think it was that was, that kind of helped yeah. um, not help but that was a point for me being here where I was like, this is, this is it. Yeah. And, and something happened, okay? Because in our second season, we actually went to Detroit, we went to Coletta Motorsports and we did this whole episode, right? American manufacturing is back. But when we were there, we went to the broken down buildings, right? And we actually told this crazy story and we filmed and I was like in the rubble, you know, and, and talking about Detroit and manufacturing and everything. And we came back and we actually gave that whole project to Joel. So remember now, Joel is a B camera. He's not the head camera. He's a B camera and he does editing on the side. So he hadn't done anything big yet. So we gave him the Detroit video and he basically, you guys can watch it, right? The Detroit video on our channel. And like, he just knocked it out of the park. Like when everybody in Detroit sends us messages thanking us for that piece, you know you did something good. And, that, and that's, that's when like my team, like we actually took notice, me, Matt, and the other guys, we were like, whoa, like this is just on another level. And uh, it wasn't long after that that he became camera A and that we put him in charge of uh, everything. And it was like coming into season three, right? Mm -hmm. And it was San Quentin Prison. San Quentin. Yeah. What, what's, what, what about San Quentin Prison? Like, what's great about it? What, what, what we did there? I think the part that I really, that connected with me was going in there. It was, you know, San Quentin's this big, notorious prison that you know, it's San Quentin, that's where like Charles Manson and Scott Peterson is, you know, and um, and so going in there, there's already these like thoughts that you have, like we're going to go in there and people are just going to like mean mug us and try to stab us or, you know, anything yeah. like that. And, and you get in there and at least with the guys that we were dealing with that were kind of later in their um, sentences trying to better their lives and move on and getting ready to get out and make something better with their lives um those guys were all they're just guys yeah like you've seen on yeah. the outside yeah and i respectful. think respectful and when we went in there and we were filming them it was just it just became natural like these guys we need to like let people know that yeah they made mistakes they've done terrible things and those are still terrible but there's second chances available and yeah. i mean you know that from from your life and exactly you know, and I, a lot of guys in prison, a lot of people out there who've like been through hardship and gone through and made mistakes and they have a second chance when they see somebody like me that comes from the streets that went through hardship and I'm going back into San Quentin to actually make a difference because I'm qualified to speak to them. I think it brings a lot of inspiration because who hasn't made mistakes? Who hasn't gone through trials, right? Yeah, yeah and that was a big part of it too was 
you weren't just some guy that was going in there and doing it like no. the inmates could relate to you yeah and you kind of had that connection automatically going in that this was going to be something that they kind of had a little bit of trust for you already so the filming the filming was incredible we put it on youtube it's built behind bars actually if you look at the title it's cnc machining in san quentin prison built behind bars it's weekly and it's on YouTube, so go check it out. Uh, besides that, every day we're editing, we're filming, we're doing tutorials, we're building up the academy. What would you say one of the biggest challenges machine uh, filming in machines is? Coolant. Coolant? <laughs> uh, that's why we got the Blazer Synergy 735. You walked into that. Yeah. Blazer, you're welcome. Yeah. It's clear coolant. It's good for your skin. It's awesome. It's good for your machine. <laughs> Uh, we're not doing a commercial, but yeah, it's a no, coolant, before, right? yeah, when we were filming the second season, it was just kind of like yellowy, milky, or whatever. You yeah. know, it was just hard to see through. Now with the clear coolant, that makes a world of a difference. Yeah. But what would be another one? The time, uh, like how long it takes. Time, yeah. Well, especially in thinking about the lion, like yeah. that was. I think in total, I remember looking at all the footage, and I think it was around. Just filming, I think we had 40 hours of filming with multiple cameras, not like yeah. one camera. Multiple cameras simultaneously, at least two cameras, and then sometimes. And that was just the titanium five. line. That was just. Yeah, just yeah that the was titanium just the titanium line. line. That wasn't the test aluminum one or yeah. including other interviews or uh, B roll stuff that we got to kind of fill in to make that video. Yeah. So, and I've learned a lot, you know, from not being a machinist coming in and you're telling me make sure you get this cut and I'm like oh, okay you know and I'm, yeah, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing but now it's like it's sure going it's, that, when, when he came in if it's going like 10 inches a minute not that I've ever let anything run 10 inches a minute unless it was like Monel or something but he had to learn that I had to tell him like like I know that you are coming in you think that's amazing but if I actually put that on camera I'll get ridiculed and everybody will attack me so we have to like hit it hard we're gonna make it happen and we gotta show those chips pounding against that wall and and uh, and do it yeah yeah there's definitely points where I was like no but the shot is so good <laughs> like so like just the framing or anything and you're like nope can't do it I'm yeah like, but it looks good. I can do it. But there's times where now he, I know. Yeah, but he's brought in our uh, his his the slow motion cameras and stuff. And now we purchase cameras that like do the slow motion and, and just just brought like a certain element of quality and style to the game. And we got a pretty talented team. So filmmaking, CNC machining, lifting it up. Why is it important? Because all of the main shops, all those clean floors everybody talks about are closed up and wrapped up in NDAs because they don't want to show their parts, they don't want to show their processes, and nobody gets to see it. So making film and putting out crazy videos and taking your pride in making the videos amazing is important because that's what's going to excite our kids and show them what this industry is about. That's what's gonna show our parents what the industry is about. That's what's gonna show the counselors and people. Like, we make rocket ships, we make submarines, we make everything in between. So, uh, we are advocates for CNC machining, and the biggest push that we do, our gift, is bringing film to the masses. And he's the one, he's overseeing it, making it happen. So what editing software do you actually use? We use Adobe Premiere. We have the whole Adobe suite and we use After Effects for our different uh, motion graphics and stuff that we use. And um, Billy does some stuff as well in awesome. Cinema 4 Billy Boyce, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So then you basically just take the film, just pop it all up, boom, boom, boom. And then you just start chopping it up and placing it together to create this whole, what do you call it? A sequence. A sequence. Yeah, timeline sequence. Timeline. Yeah. And then uh, you're good with the music too, like, so you, what do you do? You just feel that, feel the, you know, the mood and the machines and, and make sure you don't compete with what's going on, but lift it up and bring it down at times and... Yeah, I've been a musician for like 20 years. I played drums and and been in bands and know how to play other instruments. So, awesome. I, so the music kind of comes naturally to me to be able to 
kind of make it flow and orchestrate it through and to kind of have an ear to know what sounds good and even just timing and the beats of the edits and stuff like that so awesome and the music is the part that makes so much of it you know if it had some cheesy music but cool edits it would be a cheesy video yeah. the music is music and sound effects is what really helps it kind of make it more three-dimensional four-dimensional and then when we came what kind of cameras did we have oh man those were I think Sony Panasonic I can't even remember. I, I think they were Sony. I think they were I similar to the ones that you did, were... but they were just older school, right? So I actually spent $10,000 per camera and bought multiple cameras and shot the first season. And that's why you see from the first season of the show, you actually see, see that it's, it's just very rough. I mean, you just, like, if you look at my face and stuff, it's just very blotchy and stuff. That's the camera. And then when you go to building blocks, I'm not building blocks, but I'm built behind bars. You'll just see that it's just clean and it's just the, the color is perfect and stuff. And that is the difference in the cameras. So now, now the cameras that we have. Yeah, the, yeah, we use Canon cameras, but the, the difference is in the lens is it's the other ones had the lens that were built into the camera. They were fixed onto the camera. And so it's, they had its own advantages for shooting a reality show, but we wanted a much more cinematic look. And Matt and Alistair, who was here when I came on at second season, he, they really pushed to get these cameras that we have so it has more of a cinematic feel and something that's more just better to look at. Awesome. And sometimes we even bring in better cameras than that, depending on what we're filming. And, and we use a lot of GoPros and yeah, lots yeah, the of whole GoPros. Team. Yeah, we broke a lot of GoPros. <laughs> <laughs> Those cheap cases. There's a funny when we were in Detroit one time. He was flying the drone. I remember like being. I, I remember like being talking about breaking cameras. One time we were in Detroit and he was flying the, the drone and it was like just buildings and like open doors and I just see like I'm watching him fly and I'm just like he's flying down like this corridor of like buildings and open and brick and broken and and then there's this door way over there and it's just like eh, and I'm like is he going in is he going in is he going in is he going in and he's like eh, and he just hits like the side of the door and like boom thing like explodes and like lands on the ground it's like wah, 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 wah. Yeah, hey, can you take a picture of this? Come on. Yeah. It's all good. good times. Uh, we did get some good footage from before I wrecked it. But it looked good going straight <laughs> into the the wall actually it was an action yeah. shot. Yeah we, we definitely used that shot on the show. Yeah. Sorry Mr. Drum. It's not looking good for you. Where have you, you've gone to Hawaii one or two times? Just we, once. Just the yeah, once, just right? Once him, yeah. We went up, rock crawling up in the mountains and stuff, right? Yeah. Checked out Dwayne. Uh, you've gone to Michigan, Detroit. Did, uh, were you with us when we went to Florida? Florida, which one was For that? In the Hilo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I and think then, the only place I didn't go this last season was Virginia. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the only one. You're having a baby. Yeah. Oh man. He looks like a baby, but he's got like four. Four kids. Oh man. <laughs> so, dude, it's yeah. been it's been a pleasure. And we went to Switzerland. Yeah, we went to Switzerland. That was awesome. Dude. Hot air balloon rides. Hot air balloon rides. Like filming. just chilling, making it happen. Yeah. That was like, you know, people were like, that's the first time that you went outside the United States. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, Everything that I put, like, is true. Like, I've had a hard life. I've been working. Like, I haven't had a chance to go anywhere. That's the first time that I got to travel. And took Gina, took my team, and went over there and had a blast. That was good times. Yeah, super good. And everybody at Blazer, I mean, like, they were just, like, just the classiest people. They took such good care of us. And the hot air ballooning, I'm, you know, like a cat, right? Just, 
up in the sky. It was super good. Yeah, I was in the the basket, which is like like a four four or five foot square. Yeah. And it was you, Gina, and then the, a driver, the pilot or whatever he is, and and me with my camera on my shoulder rig, and I was basically leaning over the back of the basket like the whole time trying to film and. Like, <laughs> I was trying to stay in the basket, you know what I mean? And Gina was like ready to go bungee jumping, I'm like stay inside, stay inside. <laughs> and then after like three hours, I was thinking like. How come we're not going back? Like, why are we going yeah. back? What is this? What and they're like, oh, it, it doesn't turn. We're gonna go drag down on that ground, like. Yeah. And I just see dirt, like, yeah. kind of like Russell Crowe on Gladiator when he wakes <laughs> up and the dirt's like underneath him, and it's just like, oh. I'm like, Genus, hold on, Gina. <laughs> Did you get that landing? Anyway, you guys have an awesome day. Just wanted to introduce you to another one of my team members, my family members. Boom, helping us make it. It's not about me, I'm one person. This is an entire talented team. We're all tight and uh, thank you for all that you do, bud. Yeah, man. Boom. Boom.